Hey guys, we're going to get our teeth into a big section of chemical change called chemical equilibrium. Now there's two main sections that we're going to have a look at in this video. The first one is how things begin in terms of understanding equilibrium. It's dynamic equilibrium. And then we're going to go on to Le Chatelier's principle. So starting with dynamic equilibrium, what's it all about? Well, first thing to understand is that in order to have a dynamic equilibrium equation, it's got to be a reaction that can go both ways. Okay, so for example, that nitrogen plus hydrogen is going to give us ammonia and then can go back again. We would describe dynamic equilibrium in a definition as dynamic equilibrium exists when the forward rate of reaction is equal to the reverse rate of reaction, simply put as a formula. Now, don't misunderstand equilibrium as like a seesaw where you feel it's in equilibrium when it comes to rest, because that's actually not dynamic. Dynamic equilibrium is an interesting scenario where things are still moving, the chemical reaction is still going on, yet the system as a whole is in equilibrium. So don't think of a seesaw, rather think of something like traffic. Now let me explain what I'm talking about. Let's take an average town or city where people in the morning are going to wake up and they're going to go from home to work. So the traffic on the roads in the morning is going to be predominantly going in one direction. Then in the evening, things are going to be the other way around. Everyone's going home from work back to their homes. So neither of those two examples present equilibrium because there's a shift one way or the other. But let's take midday. Midday, there's still cars on the road. So the reaction, for example, if we go back to our chemistry for a moment, is still going on. Things are still going to the left. Things are still going to the right. But there's no particular bias whichever way. So there's no reason why there'd be more cars going back to home or more cars going to work, more cars going to the city, etc. So let's have a look at the, 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 the uh, let's have a look at the rate of reaction. The one way will be equal to the rate of reaction the other way. And that is what we call dynamic equilibrium, where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, so that's where things start. Let's move on to the chunky stuff, which is Le Chatelier's principle. Now, Le Chatelier, a French scientist, um, had this understanding that, uh, of how equilibrium system works, and it's all about being a little bit of a rebel. So I'll explain that in more detail as we go along. If the conditions of a system in equilibrium are disturbed, the equilibrium shifts in a direction so as to oppose the change. Okay, it's all about that opposing the change. That's a very natural thing. Imagine you are on your way to work or on your way to school in the morning in a, in a car or a taxi and it's a cold morning in the middle of winter. What's the instinctual thing to do? You want to turn up the heating to warm things up and make it calm and comfortable again. Or on a very hot day, if you're driving along in the car, if you can, you want to turn on the air con because that is going to keep things nice and cool. So when it's hot, you want to cool things down. And when it's cold, you want to warm things up. As I said, it's a very natural thing to do. And that's very similar to what Le Chatelier's principle is all, all about. It opposes the change that caused it. So let's have a look at a way to remember this or a way to structure your thinking in an answer. So we've got the little acronym DLFR. Now this is going to help you structure your thinking. It's going to help you give you four clear points to put on your paper. Uh, and it makes the examiner's job easier, makes your job easier. Um, so let's quickly run through how you'd, how you'd go about things. D is the first thing, which is actually the disturbance. So let's say Tabo took his mixture and he put it into some ice. All right, that's going to make a disturbance to our equilibrium. What has he done? He's cooled the temperature. So what's the system going to do in response? It's going to want to warm things up again. So why I mention the disturbance? Well, because it sets you up beautifully for the next thing, which is Le Chatelier, Le Chatelier's principle. So we would say, for example, when Tabo put the mixture into the ice, cooling it down, the system, according to Le Chatelier's principle, wanted to warm it up. So it's simply stating the opposite of whatever the change was. So we're halfway through our explanation and you've hardly even had to switch your brain on it so nice and easy. State the disturbance and then state that the system will do the opposite of that disturbance. Now we get into the chunky stuff and this is interesting. So F stands for favored. This is now we need to understand the chemistry. So which reaction is going to be favored in order to do this change? 
Is it going to be the forward or is it going to be the reverse? And you have to be able to give an explanation of that. Now, let's break this down a little bit because this is where things can get a little tricky. There's three possible changes that can happen. So let's take our example of ammonia being formed. If the temperature is adjusted, so if we heat it or cool it, we need a piece of information which I haven't given yet and that's the delta H. The delta H or the change in enthalpy tells us whether the reaction is going to be heated or cooled. Now in this particular example our delta H is negative, it's less than zero. That means that the forward reaction is in fact an exothermic reaction and therefore the reverse reaction would be an endothermic reaction. So if indeed Tabo put it in ice it would try and warm itself up by favoring the exothermic reaction. If it was heated, then it would favor the reverse reaction, which is endothermic. So here's an example there. If heated, the endothermic reaction would be favored to cool the system down. Now, what else could be changed? What about the pressure? Okay, the pressure, well, if you were squished into a taxi with a whole lot of other people, you can't spread your arms out. You want to make yourself as small as possible. Similarly, the reaction, if it's put under pressure, is going to want to make itself as small as possible. If you look on the left-hand side of the reaction, we've got one mole of ammonia and three moles of hydrogen. That's four moles of gas altogether. But on the right-hand side, we've only got two moles of ammonia. So therefore, that's a lot more compact. So if we put this under pressure, it's going to favor the forward reaction because there are fewer moles of gas on the right-hand side. If the pressure is increased, leads to the least moles. And then the last change, if there's a change in concentration, well, if something is depleted, let's say for example we removed some nitrogen, well then it's going to try and make more. How does it make more? Well, it's going to favor the reverse reaction and vice versa. All right, so that is, gives you an idea of the three possible changes we might have and how the reaction will respond. Once you've done a couple of examples, it'll start to make more and more sense. Okay, let's keep moving on. So we've worked out the disturbance, We've gone to the opposite of that disturbance according to Le Chatelier's principle. We've worked out which reaction is going to be favored. The only thing we have to do now is mention the result or the outcome. And the question is actually often geared towards this. It'll say when Tabo put the mixture into the ice, how did that affect things? Well, with our ammonia example, it would be cooling it down by putting it in ice. So therefore it wants to warm itself up. It warms itself up by doing an exothermic reaction, which is the forward reaction, and therefore we would increase the yield of ammonia produced. So that's an example. Now how on earth do you remember DLFR? It's a crazy bunch of letters. We've got a nice little acronym for it, and it's actually a beautiful description of Le Chatelier himself, because clearly he's a Frenchman by his name, and I don't know how big he was, but he was certainly rebellious by nature like a lot of good Frenchmen, if you know what I mean. So uh, he would oppose the change. You cool it down, he wants to heat it up. You heat it up, he wants to cool it down. You decrease the pressure, he wants to increase the pressure. That's Le Chatelier's way. So think of DLFR as D little French rebel. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed that. Let's just have a quick listen through to a quick, a quick overview of what we've covered today. Um, the first thing was dynamic equilibrium, which is the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And the second thing was Le Chatelier's principle, which you can remember with DLFR, de little French rebel. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Bye.